Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 409. I'm calling this teaching Lost and Found because in my time ever since 1980, I have been running home fellowships. And in that time, every so often, when I'm talking to people or counseling people, I hear things like, I've lost my joy. You know, I don't have the more abundant life. People have said that to me. I'm praying, but I still have plenty of needs. I hear that every so often. And there's nothing wrong with people coming and doing that. People have said to me, how can I get from lost to found? How can I find the answers that I need in my life? And that's what I'm going to address here this morning. How to get from lost, if you lost something, to finding it again. To finding the joy, the more abundant life. The excitement of the word. How can I get that back? Well, I'd like to start in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. And one of the things that I like to do and what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to read lots of God's word. I believe that that is a basic key to being spiritually in tune is reading God's word. And here in verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. And that's what we do at fellowships. That's what you do in the morning when you grab your word and read it a little bit. You're You're looking at it. You're handling it. It's the words of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. As we read that word, this is what we get. We learn about eternal life, which was with the Father, and it was manifested unto us. Verse 3 that which we have seen and heard and declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship was with the Father. These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. If you want to get the joy back, if you need to get it back, it's handling this wonderful word of God. That's how you get the joy back. Go to Matthew chapter 6. When I first got into the word, and I went to my fellowship coordinator, and I said, I'm really blessed with everything that I'm learning in the word, but you know what? I I still have lots of needs. It was me. I don't know how I'm going to keep my car running. I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't know the work. You know what I mean? Those things were really on my mind. I was a young man at the time. I was concerned about these things, and I said, man, I see the promises in your word, but I'm not tapping into them. And he brought me to this section of God's word, which I'm going to read to you. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And the word mammon means the things of the world. See, if you're thinking about the things of the world and how you're going to work with them and you're still trying and you're learning how to do the things of the, the word, they don't really work all that closely together. We need to be thinking about the things of God. That's what it's saying. Keep your finger here and go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Philippians, Colossians chapter 3. And in verse 1, it says, If ye, and that should be since, since ye then 
be risen with Christ, and we are, right? Yeah. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. These are the things that we're to think about. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, it doesn't say here, Christ, who is the, a big part of our life. It doesn't say God, who is the biggest part of our life. It says Christ, who is our life. He's our, that's the things we really need to think about. We got to put them on our mind. Shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Modify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Those ones, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For the which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Not the born again ones. We're to think on the things above. Verse 7 says, In the which ye also walk sometime. We all were there sometime. I remember those days. <laughs> I'd like to forget them, but when ye lived in them, we lived in them. But now ye also put off these. These are the things you put off. You get rid of them. You don't think about them. Anger, wrath, malice blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, and that's God. These are the things that we're to think, we're put off anger, all these things that we read. We're not the children of disobedience anymore. We're brand new people. We have the same old mind, so we got to work <laughs> on that. But we're new people. We're born again. Christ is our life. That's how you get the joy back. That's how you tap into the more abundant life. Okay, verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Now our new life is Christ within us, all in all. We got to think about that. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. When it says the elect of God, in my Bible, I wrote this thing, Sagwa. You know what that is? sons of God with all power. That's our election. That's who we are now. Right now, we are sons of God with all power. Holy, beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. We become great forgivers. We have to forgive people. I got to tell you this story. People are annoying. <laughs> yeah, they are. And, and we're people too. You know? and, and the thing of the reason we are is because we're people. We like things a certain way, you know. If someone comes in and has an opinion that's completely different of mine, we, we get irritated. We say, what does that guy know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey. And, we, and that's life. And the Bible has a lot about forgiveness in it. And that's because we need it mm -hmm. badly. We need it for ourselves and we need to do it to others because we're annoying because <laughs> we, we like things a certain way, you know. We have likes and dislikes, right? Yeah, everybody's different. I think the Buick is the best car there is. 
<laughs> someone else might think I'm nuts. Yep. And they'll even not to want to talk to me about it. They go, oh, he's just opinionated. It's just the way life is. That's my story. We're people, we're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to forbear one another, forgive one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, the love of God in the renewed mind in manifestation, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be Thank thankful. You. See, we're to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. To let it dwell in you richly, you got to look at it every once in a while. Actually, you got to look at it all the time. You got to look at it. You got to read it. I've known people that they get up in the morning and they they're wandering around. They go, "Where's my Bible?" Where's my, I need my fuel. I need my fuel for their adamant. They got to get to their Bible. I shouldn't have hit it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't hide it. But that's what we need. We need that. Where's that Bible? We need that. Let the word of Christ dwell in, within you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. And this doesn't mean I'm drinking this coffee in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it means that Christ is in our minds in whatever we do. We don't go around just going, let me hold your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Of course we do everything in the name of Jesus Christ because it's Christ within us, giving thanks to, to God and the Father by him. Pretty wonderful. Did I tell you to keep your finger in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse? Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, oh, you good, because I did. You know, we can't serve God and the things of the world. We want to put our main <laughs> emphasis on the things of God. Does that mean you can't go do something else every once in a while of course but our main focus has to be on god look what it says here in verse 25 wherefore i say unto you take no thought for your life that word thought means mental pressure it can't be that you take no thought for your life how would you get here how would you eat breakfast you have to think a little bit about life this means mental pressure where you've got anxiety. How am I going to make it? What's going to happen today? You're, you're worried about those things. Is you don't get mental pressure over your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet your body, what ye shall put on it. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? See, God has a system, a plan that takes care of the birds. He does. They, it's not, it's not the one for us, but they live in nest in the, in the trees and stuff. And when a storm comes, God's got it figured out that they can settle in there and be all right. And he feeds them. He's got all these things that you could eat. Well, none of that stuff would really satisfy us. He has a different system for us. He has one all set up for the, the birds. It says, are you not much better than they? Well, we're sons of God. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit? to his stature, just by really putting it on your mind, can you grow? Well, no, I tried. <laughs> Especially when I was in junior high and high school, I wanted to play basketball and I was the smallest guy on the team, but I learned how to make that work for me too. Verse 28, and why take ye thought, and that's mental pressure, anxiety, for raiment. Consider the lilies of the field, for they grow, 
They toil not, neither do they spin. Verse 29. And yet I say in you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith or immature believing? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, and the Gentiles is the nations. And what he's really saying here is says, everybody seeks after these things. Did I skip 31? Yeah. No, nope. let's read it. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what ye shall eat. And that word thought is mental pressure. Or what shall we drink, or wherewithal we shall be clothed. For after all these things, everybody seeks after. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. God knows what you need, but this is the key to, to getting it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought anxiety mental pressure for the morrow for the morrow sh shall take thought of the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof every day has enough things to worry about that's <laughs> yes. what it's saying has enough things to worry about go to uh mark chapter 11. And see, God has a system for the birds and all that. And he has a system for us, too, which is written right here in Mark chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith or believing in God. And a real simple translation of this is believe God. That's the system that God has for us, mm. is that we believe God and we believe the promises of God. Verse 23, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, see how important believing is, that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith we confess it we say it we believe it we get it i want to point out some things here it says whosoever means whosoever right so we're all in there and then it says say to this mountain now i don't believe this is a literal mountain but it could be if you needed it Mm -hmm. You say, I've never seen a record in God's word where anyone moved a mountain, and I've never heard about anyone moving a mountain. But we all have mountains of problems, anxiety at times, not every day, but we we face them. You know what I mean? And so they're they're mountains. They're big problems. David had a Goliath. He was a giant of a fellow that he had to face. We get goliaths in our lives too big problems mountains of problem they hit us but we still have a way out we still have a way out see that's what i think the main purpose of this verse is it's not mm -hmm. that we're going to go look for a mountain right we're going to just be able to handle Obstacles. even big problems we don't doubt in our heart and it's kind of interesting believing happens in the heart and doubt happens in the heart. They both happen in the heart. We guard our hearts with God's word. That's why we always put that on in our minds. And shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, what you want, what you desire, ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The word shall puts it in the absolute. You'll get it. You'll have it. So if you lost something, you lost the peace, you lost the joy, you lost some promise from God's word, you can get it back. It's lost for a little while, but you can find it again. Go to Second Corinthians. 
chapter 12 in verse 7 is where I want to start. I told you that I like to read large sections of God's word, so that's what I do. In verse 7 it says, Least I should get exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. Paul is writing here. He's saying, I've got an abundance of revelation I'm so thankful for, but I've got a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, and tells you who it came from. And Paul knew who it came from to buffet him, to polish him off, to hurt him. That happens to us at times too. And it says, and least I should be exalted above measure. Eight says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. The first thing that Paul did was pray. He says, God, I'm getting tired of this. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul heard the word from the Lord Jesus Christ that God's favor is sufficient in all this crap that he was getting. And then Paul says, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities, in my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. When we're getting attacked, when we're getting hurt, when people don't respect you, when people say bad things about you, when you're being distressed and you have an opportunity to be mentally distressed, that's when the power of God can come into our lives. That's what he's saying. Verse 10 says, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and weakness. Wow. I take pleasure in them, in reproaches. When some, you know, something's up against you or reproaches in necessities, when you need your necessity, your daily life necessities, in persecutions, when people are saying bad things about you badly. You can't wait for people to pat you on the back. They might not. In distress for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul learned that when these things happen to him, he becomes strong. He says, all right, I'm going to have to see how God works with this. Keep your finger here and go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. You know, there used to be a bumper sticker that said, shit happens. It's true. We just handle it different than other people. Romans 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by believing, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's someone to have peace with, and we have that by whom also we have access by believing unto this grace where we, wherein we stand. We have grace by believing wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We stand in this. The word grace is an interesting word in a lot of ways. It's also translated favor. God has favor on our lives. Some people look at this word grace. Well, that, that means I don't have to do anything. God's going to favor me and cover me. But that's not what it says here. It says, wherein we stand. We stand in that grace, in that favor. That means we stand on the word. We claim the word. We proclaim the word. And we're going to stand on it. And the reason we have grace is so that we can stand when we're getting the shit kicked out of us by the adversary. Yeah. We're standing there. Shit happens. When it does, we go, I don't care. God's for me. I'm going to stand in the grace. Yeah. I'm going to stand in the grace. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Who in the heck would glory in tribulation? Only people who know the word. Right. They're the only ones that would. Everyone else would be running from it. But it says, 
Also know it that tribulation works patience. You know why it works patience? Because when it happens, we've seen ourselves get out of it before. We've seen God get us out, so we go, well, it's pretty shitty today, but tomorrow's going to be good. And patience, experience, and experience hope. That's when we really start to see the hope. The word hope means uh, expecting a favorable outcome. There is the great hope of the return of Jesus Christ, but we have other hopes still, yeah. other promises that we're going for. And then verse 5 says, Hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. It's shed apart. It, there's <laughs> verses, there's translations that use, it floods our hearts. It floods our hearts, which is given to us by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. I wrote a note in my Bible that says, Holy Spirit is the game changer. It's the game changer. It's like having Tom Brady on your <laughs> your quarterback. We're behind by, a, by two touchdowns, <laughs> but I got a game changer. Well, it's better than that. But they call it a game changer because it can change what's going on, the outcome. Holy Spirit, when we got born again, is a game changer. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 26. In journeyings off, in perils of the water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen. Look at all the perils. How many perils have you been through? In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings off, in hunger and thirst, in fastings off, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. All these things can be happening to us and have happened to us at times, right? Plus, here it says, plus that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, because that was Paul's responsibility. We all have responsibilities. God has given us all functions and callings to do. So we have these callings and functions to do. And as we're trying to do that, we're in perils and perils and perils and perils and perils, but we're handling them, but we still got to do what God has called us to do. Just like Paul did. He, he went through all this crap, but he still had to take care of all the churches. That's amazing, isn't it? It really is. And we are the same. God has called all of us to a function, to a thing that needs to be done. And we can do it no matter how many perils we run into. Lots of stuff happens, but we, we still have to do what God's called us to do. And we still can. Second Timothy 3.10 But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Here's Paul talking. He says, you know my doctrine. You know the things I've been teaching you. Manner of life, the way I did things. Purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, my love of God that I have for you. Patience. Look at the patience I have. Persecution, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch at Iconium, at Lister, what persecutions I endured. He says, you know that I did all this stuff, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Whatever happens to us, the God can deliver us. The Lord delivered me. And then verse 12, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you're going to live godly in Jesus Christ, it says you're going to su suffer persecution. I'm glad that it told us, and out of it all, the Lord will deliver me before I found out that I was going to have to be <laughs> persecuted, <laughs> you know, suffer persecution. In summary, I want to say 
if you ever find yourself at a loss, you pray and ask God for help. You get into the word and you read about the promises that you need. If you can find like-minded believers to help encourage you, do that. Fellowship with like-minded believers is a key to the more abundant life. But no matter what, we always have God. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.